Yo, yo, boys, back with another video. Today, we're going to be doing a good old fashioned solo shuffle tier list. We may have some uh, blitz tier list coming out, some 2v2, maybe just do a whole duration of those and then go back to the videos. There's not really much to be doing right now, but um, Rogue did get nerfed and uh, Friday they fixed the bugs, but they're, it still feels really bad. I'd say Sub Rogue is kind of, I'd say it's worse than the rework by far because you lost your utility. And or you mainly just lost everything. You lost your out on damage. You you lost you know a bunch of other things that made sub rogue good. So like when we didn't have damage, we had a lot more CC. We were able to do a lot more things. And you know now it's kind of like we don't have the damage. We still have CC, which is great. But uh, overall, I don't think it's doing that great. So that's to answer any questions about sub rogue. If you're looking to play rogue right now, play outlaw or assassination. I'd say outlaw is probably the better one to play right now. But Assassination is probably just behind that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say about that one. But let's get on with the video here. Uh, first, we're going to be starting off with Warlock, the one and only class that never gets touched. And when it does, it has a S tier spec at all time, which is going to be Affliction Warlock. It's going to be one of your best in every category. It's just doing a ton of damage and it's just broken and everything. It just, once you get triple bleeds up, it's over. You win the game. You have spammable CC, you have a ton of, you know, you can use walls in stuns, so you don't have to worry about a rogue just killing you ever, like, in, like, in weird situations. And then, obviously, you just have a lot of damage, that's really all it comes down to. If I sound different, I'm still a little bit, you know, sick, so keep that in mind. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Destro Warlock, which is going to be A tier. Uh, it did get a massive buff, and you'll see boomies and Destros a lot more. Now, I'd still say Affliction is definitely the best. I'd say Destro, it's kind of like Sub Rogue, except, you know, it's it's like it's a hard version of Caster because you need to know how to fake cast. You need to, you need to do certain things for it to make it work 24-7. And a lot of people just don't know how to do that. They would rather just, oh, ba I get the kick. I just do want to heal the damage no matter what, and that's it. As a Destro Warlock, like, if you're getting trained, you're not going to be doing that much damage, and that's just how it is. But uh, right now, it's not the worst. It's not the best. Next one we're going to be going with is going to be Demo Warlock, which I'd say Demo is probably either ahead or behind. I'd say it's probably ahead only due to the fact that it's it just has so much more control. It's basically a, it's a sub rogue with it does have good damage, but um it's pretty much just a sub rogue uh, except that it has spammable CZ. So I'd say Demo 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 Lock is always in the spot to where it's just a huge control freak and. It does have the damage it needs when it does burst. Obviously, on its not uh, when it's not bursting, it's not as strong as an Affliction Warlock, but it definitely it, it has its spot in its own category in there. Next one is going to be Warrior. So if I had to put Warrior somewhere after the boss, Warrior is definitely close to S tier. Uh, it has like this one ability called Demolish or something, and in like two seconds you can literally get like two million. It's like it's a ton of damage. I've seen Naj get one-shotted by it every time. When he doesn't have Trinket, he gets 100 owed. Um, so I, I think Warriors are definitely coming back in the game. Now, would I put it at S tier? Probably. Possibly. I definitely think it's high A. Um, I don't know. I'll put it at A for now, but I probably will change this to S. Maybe low S. I think it has the, it has the damage it needs now to be really good. It has big MS, has pretty good cooldowns, and obviously... It's doing big damn. And that's really all you need in Solo Shovel. If you have those three, you're pretty much fine. So, Arms Warrior is going to be... It's not, Actually, I'd prefer it not to get touched. I think where it is right now is fine. I feel like um, it needs the burst dam. It did need it. Like, it, it was just missing out on, like, a little bit of burst dam. But now it has what it needs, pretty much. It has Demolish. It has Big Burst. So, it's not even like your Demolish is the only cooldown you have. You still have a ton of burst uh, just by yourself. So... They're definitely in a good spot, but they're definitely up there as a melee. They're on, they're one of the better melees since there's only like two good melees right now. Next one that we're gonna be going over is going to be Fury Warrior, which I think is not doing so hot right now. It's gonna be low A if not B. Um, its defensives are okay, but it just doesn't feel as tanker tanky as an Arms Warrior, and then obviously it's not putting the output as an Arms Warrior at all. It still does okay damage, but consistency wise they kind of ruined fury fury used to be a class that done damage all the time and that's the only reason it was good now it's like 
off your burst damage, you're literally like a sub row. You have damage on your burst, but then off your burst, you're just not doing anything. And these classes need the consistency. They're literally made for cons you know constant damage, and they just don't got it. So this is low A, so it, this will end up being down here somewhere. Keep that in mind. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be, um, let's go with Rep. Rep Paladin, which is actually not in the worst spot right now. I'd say it's definitely ahead of, I, I don't know where it's honestly ahead of, to be honest. I kind of want to put the, the casters on the left and these ones on the right, but I kind of want to try to even it out a little bit if I can. If I had to put Rep somewhere right now, I'm just gonna put it here for now. Maybe I'll switch to these later, but I, you guys kind of know how how I do my tier list. I put my casters on the left because casters are in a, an entire different league. Most of the most of the casters are just higher up, so the melee is right, casters left. Because they're, they're, the casters obviously rule their arena right now and everything, solo shuffle, blitz, everything. Like they're just they're good in every category, and they're controlling almost in every other category. But we may move these. We'll see. Red Paladin is not a good, like it's not in the worst spot, and I'd say it's actually doing pretty well. It has a got, it has a goaded amount of damage. You have a bunch of utility. You pretty much have everything you would want as a red. Obviously, you're not S tier wise, but you're definitely there. You're ready to go. H Pal, which is going to be S tier, uh, after the buffs. Now that your forbearance is not only quicker, but your land hands is no longer affected by um, dampening. Which I thought they, this is what they should do for Miss Weaver's Orb. Don't have it affected by dampening, and I swear they would be so much better than they are. But uh, yeah, H5 is one of your better healers in Solo Shuffle. There's really only three healers you can really play and make it work, and this is one of them. So H5, after all its time, it's never gotten to be good in the last four expansions. And I love how the moment it's viable, it's just going to get butchered again, because they do this on purpose. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's good to see H5 finally have a good, you know, a, a spotlight after... Six years of never being good, pretty much. Now nah, I'm playing it, it, it. It's good and then it's bad. They just nerf it. They just it's only good for like a week. Watch, it's gonna. By the time you guys see this video, in a week later, it's gonna be nerfed. Watch it. The next nerf is gonna be like H file nerf by seven percent or ten percent, and then they're just gonna keep doing it until it's dead, like they do every time. Next one we're gonna be going over is going to be shaman. Now, shaman right now, if I had to say, I'd say elemental is S tier even after the nerfs. Uh, they did re they did so they ended up having a few bugs and they changed it and then they changed it back. So a lot of those that's why elemental shaman still feels broken. Like it's still doing a ton of burst damage and it's still really good. I'd say it's one of the better casters because it's such an easy spec to play. Not only you are you tanky, but you don't have to cast. You're just sitting there spamming. Like there's no cast bar for an, an LA shaman other than like hex. So it's kind of just a chill spec, laid back. And if you're looking to play a caster, I'd say LA's one of your top dogs because it's just such a basic easy caster right now and it just makes it really good next one that we're going to be going over is going to be enhancement shaman which is actually personally i think it's above fury warrior but behind ret um maybe it can be a f in front of ret so maybe this looks better i still think enhancement is super good but i feel like the only reason ret's better is because of its overall utility so enhancement shaman might have insane burst but its utility sucks like, it doesn't have bop, it doesn't have land hands, it doesn't have sack, like, all these, like, facts, factors in, in solo shovel, because it's just, it's a damp fest. You want to, whoever can live to the highest dampening is going to win. And as a ret, you're going to want one of these guys on your team. Maybe not as an H-Pal, but overall, I think Enhance is definitely, it has its spot up here as well. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Wrestle Shaman, which is obviously going to be A tier. Now... In the sense that Wrestle Shaman is only better than the worst of the worst, so by no means is Wrestle Shaman insane or nothing. It's just viable. That's it. So that's all Wrestle Shaman. Wrestle Shaman is not a spec that you want to play. There's only three specs that you can currently really flourish in Solo Shuffle with, and I, you'll see at the end of this video what they are. But Wrestle Shaman definitely has its spots. With it being a caster meta heavy, you know, season, having having a ground on your team, especially when you know you usually have one or two shamans in the lobby. Uh, whether it's an enhance or a wrestle sham, uh, especially like an arena and in general, um, they just have a really good counter to casters because of grounding, you know, long range kick. So in solo shuffle, I would definitely see wrestle shaman being viable. And obviously, it's not going to be S tier, but it's definitely it's playable. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be hunter. So after the nerfs, it's kind of hard to put hunter somewhere. 
But if I had to say from the best, I would probably put BM at no, probably, let me think. I'm only going to put it number two, and I'm only putting it at number two because it did. they did get a nerf, and their burst is still pretty good, but off their burst, they're not doing as much crazy damage they were. They Now it's kind of like, it's sure, they might be getting their burst every minute and a half or whatever, a minute, but they're not doing like what an Affliction Warlocks are able to do, where they're literally killing you the entire game, 100 0 0 0 0 Once an Affliction Warlock has their bleeds up on you, you're dead from 100-0 consistently. So that's the only reason I'm putting BM behind. Otherwise, BM would be number one. Uh, BM still viable, still one of the best specs in the game. I think that's kind of an obvious. You see them at literally every single lobby of every match almost. They're insane. So, yeah. And if you, if you think I'm wrong with the S tier so far, I guarantee you, if you watch somebody stream Solo Shuffle above 2200, one of these specs are going to be in there almost every single time. Every other game at least. That's how popular they are. And popular classes are the best classes. If you won't see, even if a, if a class is garbage, you're never going to see it. That's basically the, you know, that's how I look at it. But next one that we're going to be going over is going to be MM Hunter, which is actually isn't doing that good. Uh, I think it's one of the worst. I honestly think it's worse than Enhancement Shaman. Like, the burst difference is insane. Enhancement Shaman is basically the MM uh, melee version of MM Hunter and Sub Rogue. Like, Enhancement Shamans do a ton of burst damage, a ton they can melt you down, and especially like uh, Warrior Enhancement Shaman, you get one of those in your team, and you're just, you're doing good. But I think uh, MM is kind of just in a bad spot. Its burst is mediocre, and it's just not that good. It, it does, sure, it might do a little bit of burst damage, but then after its burst damage, it's just sitting there taking the absolute dong, and it's just not having a chance to uh, do really much other than just trapping. But that's pretty much it. Next one we're going to be going over with is going to be Survival Hunter, which is going to be a little bit ahead of, I'd say it's honestly better than MM Hunter, but behind Enhancement. Uh, Survival Hunter is do-do damage, but they do take a lot of damage, especially in this type of meta. Um, you know, they're still viable, but I, I'd say MM is just the worst Hunter spec out of the three right now. It's just, it's not even close. Like, MM is just, kind of, it, it just it, it's a dying breed. It died out a while ago. When it got fat nerfed. Even though I still think it's okay. But compared to how it used to be. Like he used to literally two shot on it's aim shots. It literally was like. Insanely broken for like a few months or something. And you know it got nerfed. And ever since then they haven't even. You know done anything with the spec. It's, again it's the same thing as sub rogue. They do this with every other spec eventually. But they always do it to sub rogue. So every every class gets this treatment. But warlocks. And that's just, that's how it is usually. Or Warriors. It's one of those two that are usually broken, you know, for 15 years. But that's pretty much that. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Evoker. So Present Evoker is going to be your secondary healer. Um, now you're getting damage. You're getting a bunch of utility. And you're just, I'd say Present Evoker and H Power are your best healers right now. So if you're looking to play the, one, the number one or two healer in the game right now for Solo Shovel, you're going to be playing one of these two. So, that's pretty much all there really is to say about that. And then we have Dev Evoker. Dev Evoker is not in a bad spot, I don't think. Um, I think it's honestly, if I had to put it somewhere, it would probably be A tier only due to the fact that it has no consistency. It has burst damage, but off its burst, it doesn't really do like in a crazy mode. Uh, I'd, say, I'd probably say it's where Ellie is about. So, maybe something like this. And that's only due to the fact that, see, it's kind of hard. Do I don't really want to put Voker S tier because it makes sense. But the thing is, so does Ellie, because Ellie only does damage on his burst usually. So like, wouldn't it make sense that Ellie wouldn't be S tier if it's only doing burst? I don't know. It's, it's kind of just hard to rate these ones because I honestly believe Dev Evoker and Ellie are kind of just the same thing. Like they're just super similar. But I think Evoker is obviously harder to play. But an overall probably worse, so I'll, I'll keep it at high A for now. You guys can let me know what you guys think about that. But that's pretty much that. Now we're gonna go with Aug. Aug is obviously trash. We don't have to talk anything about this spec. It's a support spec, great, but it just does no damage. Nobody wants this on your team. Get out of here. Next one that we're gonna be going over is going to be Mage. Frost Mage is actually not doing as great as I thought it would be. 
Uh, I'd probably say it's definitely up there in A tier. Like, it's definitely not bad, but compared to what you usually saw, after they're nerfed, just nobody plays. Everyone just goes to the, the S tier specs all of a sudden. So, uh, Frost Mage is still really good, but I still think it's just, it's too burst reliant when it's supposed to just be a flat out PvE spec. But I think it's still really insane. And then, I watch Hansel play some Arcane, and based off what I've seen, I think Arcane might be viable again. If I had to put it somewhere right now, I would probably put it right behind Dev Evoker, only due to the fact that if, if the Arcane Mage isn't free casting, he's not doing an insanity amount of, amount of damage. But he's still doing a lot of burst damage, so you know they're doing they're able to double the charts, and I've I've witnessed it, so I can say for sure, you know for certain they're good. They're in a good spot right now for you know how for how trash they usually are. They're definitely playable. I don't think they're better than Frost or Dev, but I think they're still they they have a chance at surviving, and I think they're better than Demo and Destro only due to the fact that it they actually does a lot of burst damage. So that's pretty much that. This could also be like this. This might be better, honestly, because Demo is just like I would rather have a. I think Demo is better overall because of the amount of stun CC you're getting, and that's mainly okay. This looks better, I think. Uh, next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Fire Mage, which is going to be absolute garbage. Uh, they tried to change Fire Mage into an AOE spec, and then they kind of just forgot about it. Like, it's so funny how they just act, like, imagine being the people that are making these changes and you don't even rem remember what you changed. Because I guarantee, they don't, they think, I, I don't know what they think, honestly. They just do changes that make no sense. Like, you, sometimes you just realize they don't play the game. They, they don't, they just don't. You can't play the game, it, there's no way. But Fire Mage has been garbage for, I don't even know how long. The only time it's ever been viable is that AoE build that was the most boring uh, that didn't feel like Fire Mage. I feel like it was the most boring place I've ever seen somebody play. That's why I never play Fire Mage until it's back to Shadowlands Mage. Uh, at least Fire Mage wise. But um, next one that we're gonna be going over is going to be Boomy. Boomy's actually doing really good right now. Um, I'd say it's S tier. I say it's a little bit above Frost Mage now, and I'd say it's probably um if I had to put Boomy somewhere, it would. It could be here, to be honest, but I'm trying to think, ladies and gentlemen. So just because it, I'm trying to think. It does. I, I heard that it gets two in cards, but I don't think that's right. I think somebody. I think somebody was over exaggerating. Uh, let me know in the comments. Do boomies get two in cards? All I know is boomies are doing a lot of damage, you know, and they're doing they're doing like one one million one point five mil uh, star surges, and they're absolutely full throttling it on the full metal, and they're doing a ton of damage. So I don't know, obviously this is going to be towards the lower side, so these ones are right here are going to be towards A tier, maybe Arms Warrior, so these three are towards the A tier, high A. The only reason I'm putting them at S is because they're actually doing a lot of damage. Like, they're overall good in every, in every category. Just like for how Frost Mage could be, you know, right behind Boomy, but I just don't think it, you know, nobody plays it anymore, just you never see Frost Mages in Solo Shovel. But uh, that's pretty much that. We'll see, though, what you guys think about that. Obviously, this can be right here. If I had to put Boomy somewhere, it would have been above Frost Mage. But I think just because of all the buffs they got and what I've seen, I think they're they're viable enough to be low as at least. They're like Ellie. They're pretty much like an Ellie now, but with spammable CC. So you could even say this is this would be better. But uh, just just because I think overall, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what you guys think. I don't know. I don't really know enough about Boomy to say that it's this high, but I've seen Super T's play off a of nod, and all, every time he was doing unhealable burst, he was doing like a 1.3 million a second for like 15 seconds straight. So all I know is they do a lot of damage, but who knows? What do I know? Uh, the next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Feral Druid. Feral Druid is going to be pretty much your only two melees that are viable. I honestly believe Feral is better than Arms. And BM's better than Feral. And BM's only better than Feral because uh, Feral is all dependent on how good you are. Even though people say, oh, it's a PvE spec, sure, the rotation is easy. But you still have to go and clone. If you don't clone, you're not going to win games as Feral. If you don't pre-bear things, you're not going to win, you're going to die. Now, maybe you're, maybe if it's at like 1800 CR, it's different. But once you get past like 1950 or 2K, if you don't do stuff like that, 
you're gonna absolutely you're just gonna you're just gonna die. You, you won't be able to survive the damage. But uh, overall, I think Pharaoh is definitely the best melee in the game right now. And then Arms Warriors behind that, just with its amount of burst that it's getting. So that's pretty much that. Next one that we're gonna be going over is going to be DK. Frost DK is kind of in a bad spot to be honest. I don't think it's very good at all. If I had to put it somewhere. I'd probably put it right now at the very bottom of A. Only it's still viable, but it's like it's consistency wise isn't gonna compete with this. So like if I had to put this somewhere Honestly, if if I real if we were really saying like the actual absolute garbanzo, maybe we should stop being so lightly on A tier. A tier is kinda like viable, but it's not viable. I don't I don't think any of these are viable. I think they're like they just suck. Like, they can't compete with these. Like, even these A tiers are super good compared to these. So, I think this might look better. Because I keep putting too much in A tier, and I, I just don't like it. I think B tier, it's it's B tier for a reason, because you don't see the spec. I think survival is the only viable hunter spec out of a BM and serve, and then MM is just completely useless. You guys will have to let me know what you guys think about that. But, um, next one that we're going to be going over is going to be... Uh, Unholy DK. So Unholy DK is also going to be, I'd say it's honestly, if I had to put it somewhere, I'd say it's behind Rat Paladin, above Enhance. I think DK still does a ton of damage. It's still actually great. Uh, I don't think it's, you know, anything insane, but I definitely think if you're looking for, you know, to play DK, it wouldn't be a terrible time to start. Because it's still doing damage. And if I had to switch these now, I think this looks better. This is more the A tier, like the high end A tier right here. Maybe you could say Ellie. Maybe. Maybe. I think this looks better. But you guys will have to let me know. Honestly, I again, this is just my personal opinion. And some of these classes you just don't see enough. So I can't really judge it too much. But I think right here is okay. So that's pretty much that. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Shadow Priest. Which is going to be right now currently. If I had to put Shadow Priest somewhere. It would be... Probably behind BM. Uh, Shadow Bridge does an insane amount of damage, has an insane amount of utility, and it works with every single comp almost. It's one of the best casters on top of Affliction Warlock because it's, it's just, in solo shuffle, when you have this much utility for your team, you're like a Rat Paladin with per, with permanent PvE damage. Per, you have permanent CC. You know, you just have permanent everything. You, you, you're you basically a sub rogue, a casting version of a sub rogue, even though kind of everything is. I think SP is doing a very good spot right now. If you're looking to play SP, there's a reason in the AWC, I'm pretty sure there was an SP. I don't know if it was SP Feral or if it was Mage Feral. I don't know. I don't really remember. But all I know is SP is doing good. It's one of the best casters right now. And I wouldn't say it's number one, but it's definitely the top five. Easy. Easy. And that's the only reason I'm keeping these at this, because I don't want to just plunge S tier full. So we'll keep it at that. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be uh, Disc. Disc is going to be your third best healer and your last option of, you know, help. Honestly, if I had to say this, the only reason I'm putting Disc Priest at S tier, which honestly I might not even, because this honestly may look better. I don't believe Disc Priest is S tier. It just does no healing. Like, it has a bunch of utility, and it's great and all, but, like, it just doesn't do healing. Its healing is garbage. Like, because you, you have to play an Atonement build, and once da if you face anything with MS, you, it does no healing. You're just spam shielding him before the guy dies. I still think Disc is viable, and that's the only reason I'm going to kind of switch these around a little bit. But I just think overall they're not that good. But it's kind of hard to put this somewhere, if I'm being honest. Because I don't believe, I really don't believe this can compete with an Age Spell or a Prez Evoker. I think these are the top dogs. They have everything. They have healing. They have somewhat of damage. They have CC. They just have everything. Disc has utility and uh, damage. But it has no, it's healing sucks. That's just how I feel about it. When I played my Disc, even if I played it right, it just didn't feel that great healing. Once, da once I faced something with dampening, it just felt like my atonement did nothing. And I was just spam shielding them. But at the same time, it's kind of hard because it really... I'm just going to do this. You guys can let me know what you guys think about this. I'm not going to waste too much time on it. This could be uh, S tier for your third healer, but I just don't believe it. 
Your next one is going to be Holy Priest, which is going to be your worst healer in the game. It has no damage damage reduction abilities, and you can probably see where that goes. And honestly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right here, and then this was I think okay. So your top three healers are going to be HML, Prez, Disc Priest. Again, Disc Priest is there's there, these guys are in two different categories, but they're in the same category. So I think Disc you can compete. But it's not like it's not impossible. These other ones, you're gonna get absolutely stomped as anyone if you face any one of these three. It's almost every time. That's how I'm gonna say that. But um, next one that we're gonna be going over is going to be uh, Miss Weaver. Miss Weaver is gonna be honestly probably better than Wrestlesham after the buffs. I still don't think it's great. Uh, it, it's orb still not being you know, like you know how land hands on HBL again, how it's not affected by dampening. They need to do that for their orb. Because it's their only defensive cooldown for their teammates. And right now you go through it in like 5 seconds at like 30% damp or something. It's actually like the worst CD of all time for defensive cooldown usage. It's like 10 times worse than Ironbark. It's that bad. And I, and Druid's terrible. But uh, next one that we're going to be going over. Resto Druid. Resto Druid is easily worse than Misweaver and then better than Resto Sham. Only due to the fact that... It does healing. It's, uh, it at least does healing, and it has permanent CC, but uh, it dies in like three globals, and its healing is obviously mediocre. It's just easily purged, and once you get all your stuff purged in like four globals, you're dead. It's just the fact that you can just purge everything in one like in one global is just, uh, yeah, the rest of it ain't going to be that good. But overall, you can make it work. I still don't think it's great, but it's playable. These three are still playable, but, you know, they're not they're great, really. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Outlaw Rogue. So if I had to put Outlaw Rogue somewhere, and this is being generous, because I think Outlaw Rogue is the best Rogue spec right now, only due to the fact that it just has everything really. It, it's Bruce is insane, but like it still does damage. If I had to put Outlaw Rogue somewhere, it would probably be right here. So probably above all these other ones, and then behind... Uh, Frost Mage and Boomy. I think Outlaw is still good enough to where it, I think it beats these. And then, um, I really don't want to have Outlaw right there, so I'll put it here. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to do melee and caster at the same time. They're they're in the same category, is what this means. When you look at my melee, I'm not saying, you know, this is better than this. People look at my uh stuff and they they think that. But I'm just putting them in the same category because there's it's all situational. If I if you guys would want a tier list where it's actually like in order, like perfectly, I could do that. But I think people like my like it's just you can't compare the two. There's just there's no comparison because it's just it matters what map you get. What there's just too many amplifiers that just matter. That's why I do melee and I do casters. Obviously, everyone knows casters are better in general, but that's kind of how I do my tier list. They're in the same category, which means they're they're equivalent almost to each other. So they're almost the same. They're just a little bit off. These two, though, are the top dogs of this category. Everyone else is evenly matched. So, like, Enhancement, DK, Serve, Ret, these are, e they're close to even. They're evening it out. And honestly, if I had to put Serve somewhere, this might look better. But, um, that's pretty much that. Next one that we're going to be going over is going to be Sub Rogue. So Sub Rogue, I'd say, is definitely better than Rhett, but worse than Outlaw. Uh, it definitely has its spot up there, but uh, its damage sucks. That's kind of an obvious, but it's still definitely an A tier category uh, spec because it's Solo Shovel. And then we have Assassination, which I think is better than Sub and worse than Outlaw. So this is kind of where your Rogue is right now. So it's kind of low end tier for A tier of the top dogs. But it's not the worst. So it's more like mid tier. It's still playable, but you're just these other classes are gonna have way more of a chance to, you know, win the game. But that's pretty much that. DH. If I had to put DH somewhere for solo shovel. For right now, I think it's above ret. Maybe not. Maybe like above DK. So above DK, and I'd say honestly, <laughs> enhancement might be better than all three of them, to be honest. I haven't seen Rhett Paladin in so long. People are going to get so fumed that I put Enhancement that high up. But I feel like it's so good. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But I swear I see uh, Najfit's uh, Enhancement Shaman like a lot. 
it might be the same in hand, so that might make, you know, you guys will have to let me know. Obviously, there's going to be a few messes up in here, but I don't really, I just do this video so you guys understand what's like the S tier, blah, blah, blah. Windwalker. Windwalker's actually not that bad. Um, I'd say Windwalker, the only reason Windwalker's better overall is because it's burst, and not, it just, it has more than one version of its burst. So it's not just clicking burst and you have to wait two minutes. It's you click, you have two versions of your burst. So it's like you're just helping your team out more by being there. But at the same time, is the burst equivalent? Uh, I don't think so. So no, I still think Enhancement's better than Windwalker in Solo Shovel. I think Windwalker just dies too quick. Enhance might die fast, but its overall burst damage is insane. Like it does insane burst damage. It literally is global blowing people. That's how fast it's killing. But let me know what you guys think about this tier list. If you want to see more in the future, let me know. Obviously, I'm going to check this over again, see if I got everything that I think is good. But, uh, again, keep in mind, these are kind of two different things. Melee on the right, casters on the left. Some of these, like the S tier, I put them at a specific spot because I think one's better. Maybe, honestly, um, Feral may be up there. I still don't believe it's better. This might look better, honestly. Yeah, I think that's better, to be honest. I think Feral's is insane, to be honest. It does unhealable damage. But then again, SP is better overall, I feel like. So, the, no, no, no. I like this better. So, let me know what you guys want to see next in the comments. Obviously, when I see your comment, I put this into perspective. So, it's not like I'm just putting everything here for no reason. There's, you know, a bunch of stuff that goes in. I've watched a lot of games of them. And that's pretty much that. But I feel like this is the closest tier list I can get to, to saying A tier is still playable. So, all of these are still viable and they're still playable. Are they the greatest? No. But, you know, that they're still viable. They're, they're, you can still make them work. These other classes, sure, you might be able to make them work, but you're never going to see them at high rated. You're just never going to see them. I haven't seen a single one of these specs at over 2200. And I really don't, you really don't even face uh, Rets, DHs, or DKs either. But you know they're good. Like, they're solid. They're obviously not high A or S tier, but they're definitely good. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video yet again. It's been X. I sell gold carries and coaching. Make sure to hit me up on my personal Discord down below. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the video, which you already did. Have a good rest of your day or night. And it's been X, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, peace.